the air clear about this. The email scandal, I believe, was brought out by the Clintons. Now, I would be pleased to talk more about this important matter, but I know there have been questions about my email, so I want to address that directly, and then I will take a few questions from you. You see, we knew running for election. You never want to run as the anointed one. You always want to run as the underdog. And it's kind of hard when you're building Hillary Clinton with all the hoopla and who they are now. How do you get to be the underdog? If you look at the email scandal, where did the email scandal come from? The New York Times. The New York Times has never been anything but a PR firm for the Clintons. Even if they had it, there is no way the New York Times would have broke a story about Hillary that could do damage to her. But look what she's done. They have used the email scandal to catapult them into an underdog status. Now, as we get closer to the election, when you get through the primary and you get into the general election, I can tell you, New York Times read my lips. Go ahead and write the article. It's probably already written. Right when they get into the general election, you know what they're going to say? They're going to say, oh, we've checked all this out, and it turns out there was nothing to it. That's what's going to happen. It's all used to stage Hillary. Now, if you don't believe me, remember when Hillary ran against Barack Hussein Obama? She should have used our system then, but she didn't. She came in and she was the anointed one. And he whooped her. She's not making that mistake this time. And by the way, if you notice, Hillary's also done the other thing you have to do at the formative stage of a campaign. She's going around, she's sucked up all of the money that's out there. So anybody tries to run against her, I hear people ask me, what do you think about Biden? I don't think about anybody. What are they going to run against her with? They have already laid claim to the money. Once uh, the American public begins to see the emails, uh, they will have an unprecedented insight into uh, a high government official's uh, daily communications, which I think will be uh, quite uh, interesting. You may have seen that I recently launched a Snapchat account. Those messages disappear all by themselves. You see, when Hillary gets in office within six months, according to the plan we wrote back in 1986, literally there's a plan called the 86 plan, and it's where we finalized and put everything down. Within six months, she will make bill ambassador to the UN. When Bill gets to be ambassador to the UN, it won't be six months then because of the Clinton Foundation, what they've used the Clinton Foundation for. It won't be six months until he's made Secretary General of the UN. Now, can you imagine the power Bill and Hillary have? I mean, they will have achieved more power than any couple in the history of the world when they pull that stunt. On January 20th, 1993, William Jefferson Clinton became the 42nd President of the United States. At the time, most Americans were not aware of the extent of Clinton's criminal background, nor were they aware of the media blackout which kept this information from the public. As state attorney general and later governor, Bill Clinton in 12 years achieved absolute control over the political, legal, and financial systems of Arkansas. As president, he would attempt to do the same with the nation by bringing members of his inner circle with him to Washington. The hijacking of America was underway, and its impact on future generations would be incalculable. It was years, years ago when uh, I was picked up by a man named Mr. Witt Stevens. And Mr. Witt 
was the brother to Jack Stevens, Jackson Stevens, and they were the king makers in Arkansas. So they called me one day and said, we need to meet with you, and I met with them, and they said, we need you uh, to take a look-see at a guy that we think we can make governor. And we want him to be the youngest governor in the history of the country. So I agreed, and then uh, that's when I met Bill. When I met with him, it was kind of weird because I was talking to him, and he was chasing after the waitresses. And uh, I would try to get his focus, and all he would do is just chase after the waitress, just watch, man, I want some of that, man, I want some of that, and it just went on and on and on. And finally to the point where I had actually gotten a little bit perturbed about it and said, man, this, you know, we gotta figure this out. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was attorney general at the time. And so I went back the next day to Mr. Witt and told him what I thought. I said, Mr. Witt, this guy is, is a sexual predator. He's not just a womanizer. I mean, I'm telling you, this guy's sick. And uh, he's a pathological liar. I mean, and I told Mr. Witt, I couldn't even make him tell the truth. And when it came to something he could tell the truth on that would be harmless to him, he still couldn't tell him. Well, Mr. Witt said, you can break him, break him of that. We'll, we'll have a talk. So I figured, what the heck. A couple, three weeks passed. <clears throat> they met with Bill. Apparently, they got everything worked out the way they wanted it. And he was in the game running for governor. 